who is a band that is often considered a one-hit wonder that actually has a good catalog of music, Golden Earring is apparently pretty popular back in Europe, while in the US they're known for Radar Love and or Twilight Zone. Pretty popular? I would say they are the biggest rock band of the Netherlands. They had a lot of big hits here. Electric Six. They disappeared off the radar after their first album Fire but they have many more albums with a lot of great tunes. Yes. Thank you. Love me some Electric Six. I'm just going to upvote every comment in this thread because that's what Dick Valentine would want me to do. Fire in the disco. Fire in the Taco Bell. Fire in the disco. Fire in the gates of hell. First line of danger. High voltage. The best opening for a song ever. I dunno. I don't think it beats you. I wanna take you to a gay bar. I buy the drugs off their Switzerland album is an ever skip for me. Veruca Salt. My fave band. Much more than just Seether. Gary Newman is mostly known for cars but he has a ton of great albums. Telecon is a great place to start if you are curious. Fun fact. Gary Newman is older than Gary Oldman. Metal is such a dope song. The greatest musical discovery of my life came about 12 years ago when I thought to myself I wonder what else Harvey Danger has done. I can count on one hand the number of albums I can listen to cover to cover without skipping a song. Harvey Danger's discography accounts for many of those fingers. If you only know Flagpole Sitter, you are missing out on some of the best songwriting out there. I love Flagpole Sitter and I guess I never thought to listen to their other music. I'll give it a go. Thanks. Where Have All The Merrimackers Gone is still a really solid album from start to finish. I'm not sure there's a bad track on it. I like King James version quite a bit too. But WHATMG will always be my favorite. Blue Oyster Cult. In the UK their only hit was Don't Fear, The Reaper but they have many other great songs. I Love The Night. My personal favorite. Godzilla. Burnin' For You. Burnin' For You has legitimately my favorite lyric of all time. With the small. Time to play B-sides. Time ain't on my side. F I'm killer track. I absolutely love cities on flame with rock and roll. Thanks Guitar Hero 3. That Godzilla opening riff is fierce. I love the song is just about Godzilla doing its Godzilla thing. With a purposeful grimace and a terrible sound he pulls the spitting high tension wires down. Helpless people on a subway train scream bug eyed as he looks in on them. He picks up a bus and he throws it back down as he wades through the buildings toward the center of town. The Cardigans. They are much more eclectic than just Love a Fool. Gran Turismo is a sick album from beginning to end. A masterpiece of the 90s. No doubt, it's a great danger to other motorists when I hear my favorite game. This is now a racetrack, and I must win. Erase Rewind is my favorite track from that album. I love their Iron Man cover. Warren Zevin is well known for Werewolves of London, but holy sh, his catalog is impressive as hell. Roland, Lawyers Guns and Money, Keep Me in Your Heart, all great tracks, and I'm only scratching the surface of Zevin's greatness. Desperados Under the Eaves is at the top of the list for me. Carmelita, amazing song. Obviously I'm going to agree with you here lol. Nighttime in the Switching Yard. Life will kill ya, excitable boy, accidentally like a martyr, just great song after great song. I gotta say aha, Take On Me is phenomenal, but their whole debut album has some great stuff. The sun always shines on TV, hunting high and low, and they even did a fantastic cover of the Everly Brothers crying in the rain. Don't forget the living daylights. For anyone looking for some recommendations, this is a mix of their other well known stuff, and stuff I like a lot. If you want more of their 80s stuff, The Sun Always Shines on TV is their most popular song in most of the world. We're Looking for the Whales is a song that is kind of weird but a deep cut and I like it a lot. Manhattan Skyline is one of their more guitar heavy songs from this era. Became a meme due to a sketch show. R.I.P. Benny Harvey. For some 90s stuff. Dark is the Night which kind of sounds like a classic U2 song. In the best way possible. Probably their biggest single from the 90s. Move to Memphis another guitar heavy song. I love the chorus. Slender Frame is another kind of deep cut. Was never released as a single. But I like it a lot. 2000s. Summer moved on which was their comeback single. They went on a super long hiatus split. Then reformed and released this. Lifelines is probably their most beautiful ballad in my opinion. Analog is catchy and kind of gives me a cold play vibe. 2010s. 
Riding the Crest is from an album that say her at their most 80s not during the 80s, meaning they did one very heavily electronic album with a lot of synths. This is the most take on me song from it, Butterfly. Butterfly was supposed to be the last Aha song ever. It was their final single released as they went on their retirement tour. It felt like a really good way to go out. Electronic. Catchy. And the video referenced their most famous videos from the past. Except. Cast in Steel is my favorite song from their most recent album which they came out of retirement to release. Probably their last album considering it was never supposed to happen. But hey. They've had two other last album s besides this. So who knows. The Butthole Surfers had a lot of good songs besides Pepper. If you ever saw them in their prime it was life changing. I saw them open for Nirvana. I like Todd in the Shadows take on them. His conclusion is who are an oddball band that does whatever they want to by accident ended up with a hit. The lead singer was asked if he could rename the band what would he name it and his answer was I shun your mom's vagina. Funniest thing I have ever heard Jello Biafra say was, even the Butthole Surfers think I'm weird. Their cover of Hurdy Gurdy Man broke my brain as a child, in a good way, of course. Some people know they might be giants as the Istanbul not Constantinople guys, or maybe the Malcolm in the Middle theme guys, but they've been putting out consistently quality stuff for like 30 years. Didn't they do that entire Tiny Toons episode? And they do the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse song to lol. Pretty much any time I hear a fun song on a cartoon it's they might be giants. They are all over the place. Terry Pratchett was a huge fan of them which is why there's a disc war old band called We Are Certainly Dwarfs, Millennium Hand and Shrimp. I know them primarily for Make a Little Bird House in Your Soul. I totally forgot they did the theme tune for Malcolm in the Middle. They're a strange case. They are almost a zero hit wonder. Like, nothing of theirs ever got on regular radio stations. But if you ran in the slightly strange circles they inhabit college radio. Conan O'Brien, McSweeney's you heard them all over. People either know 10 plus of their songs or they've never even heard of them. If I was going to pick one hit, it would be Birdhouse in Your Soul. That made it as far as The Carson Show, Dr. Worm, Particle Man. The Else is a perfect album and I'll discuss the subject nicely with anyone who says otherwise. My kids hate me singing, Sargon, Hammurabi, Ashurbanipal, and Jilgamiyesh. Mostly because the song then gets stuck in their heads too. Fountains of Wayne has a lot going on in addition to Stacy's mom. Adam Sklesinger, R.I.P., damn it, wrote that thing you do, and it's honestly a perfect song. He nailed the era and it's catchy as hell. I'm still mad between him and John Prine. Covid took two of our best songwriters. Update. Here's a great overview from Billboard about how Sklesinger came to write the song. Coming up on a year since Adam Sklesinger died. Yeah, so sad. He did a lot of great songwriting for the show Crazy Ex-Girlfriend as well. Welcome into State Managers is one of my favorite albums. Just so many genres touched on and such easy listening. They just got typecast with that song. Which ironically is the only one on a realis and I skip. Same. Rare to have an album that's so blindingly strong from track 1 straight through to the end. I will never tire of Hack and Sack, Valley Winter Song and Mexican Wine. They should have been global hits. Hey Julie and Valley Winter Song are some of my all time favorite songs. Devo. Half the reason 90s Nicktoons were so good was Mark Mothas bore doing the music. I can hear the Rugrats title card playing in my brain right now. Their best known song is like the fourth best song on Freedom of Choice. Which is like their third best album. Yes. The masses may remember Whip It but every dive bar in America will continue playing uncontrollable urge for years to come. The Church. The only song you ever hear is Under the Milky Way, but their catalog is amazing. Oingo Boingo. Most people know them for Weird Science or maybe Dead Man's Party, but their catalog is so much more interesting than those songs. Try these four size. Just Another Day. Grey Matter. Insanity. Dart and Yes. That There Is Danny Elfman. The Film Composer. My sister is one of the girls wearing a black wig in the Jad video. She said Danny was very nice. I was lucky enough to be at their last show for the very last album they did. Don't forget little girls. Dexy's Midnight Runners are so much more than just Come On Eileen. They have an amazing catalog and are still releasing great albums. Now known as just Dexy's. I saw them live once and also just Kevin Rowland doing a DJ set. Amazing both times. 
can we just applaud the fact that this is uploaded from their official channel? Skip to 055 to hear what a vasectomy sounds like. Placebo. They are big in Europe but in the US, their only hit was pure mourning. At least in the US, the verb is only known for but a sweet symphony. Great band. Most of their albums are worth listening to all the way through. The drugs don't work always makes me cry. I always thought it was about addiction. Only found out recently it was about watching his dad slowly dying. Knowing that the drugs were just barely keeping him alive. The Verve. Lucky man. Sonnet. Rather be. So many good songs. What a band they were. That whole album is great. And often have Richard Ashcroft songs on rotation on Spotify. Blind Melon. The entirety of their self-titled album. Blind Melon and their second album Soup is amazing. No rain is cool, but it barely scratches the surface of how cool Blind Melon was. Check out. Tones of Home. Paper Scratcher. Change. Mouthful of Cavities. And Galaxy. Hell yes. They are the band that sparked the question for me. I had a neighbor that loved everything about them and I got hooked quickly. Cheers. I love Minuteman. They are so much more than that one song from Jackass. Laru has so many good songs besides Bulletproof. In for the kill is 100% better. Toad is. Susan Vega is mostly known for her two big hits, Luca and Tom's Diner, but she has an amazing catalog with so many awesome songs. She's my favorite music artist. She just has some great, unique songs and I'm surprised she's not more famous. Dinosaur Jr. So many albums. All great, not just feel the pain. I enjoy much of the neighborhood and I don't think they are small. But sweater weather really did blow up. I saw them in Kansas City in 2019. And it was a fun show. However, they came out screaming what's up street. Louie, people were not happy. Mayo, that's hilarious. The Honoreders. I'm more a fan of Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack Shooters. Their time in the spotlight was brief but memorable. Jeff Buckley, mainly known for his cover of Hallelujah, but that whole album, Grace, is amazing. Sadly, he died after releasing that album, so that's pretty much his whole catalog, at least on a surface level. Check out Mojo Pin. XTC, world's more than dear god, one of the best bands ever. There's basically a tremendous number of groups and artists that are considered one hit wonders in America that actually had pretty successful careers outside the US particularly in Europe. One that instantly comes to mind is the band Blur, known most in the US for song 2. If you don't have any idea what it is, yes you do. It's that woohoo song, who actually were a pretty huge rock band in the UK, and whose lead singer went on to be a lot more successful in America with his odd little side project called Gorillaz. Sometimes the opposite is true. I was somewhat amused to know that there are some people in Australia who think of Rage Against the Machine as a one-hit wonder. Blur's considered a one-hit wonder in the states, that's mad. Yeah this is a surreal thing to read. Anyone who grew up in the UK in the 90s knows Blur as one of the biggest bands ever. This is true for the Norwegian band Ahar as well. While they are mostly known for Take On Me, they actually have a very successful music career, and is even listed in the Guinness Book of World Record for having the biggest paying rock concert attendance, around 190k attendees at the Maracana Stadium. Brazil. Semisonic. Although closing time is a jam, the rest of Feeling Strangely Fine has some great songs. I'll break the rules just a tad, because this band is technically not a one-hit wonder, but they are primarily known for one song, Men at Work. That song, of course, being down under. They are actually a very talented, compelling band with several great albums. The vocalist lyricist Colin Hay also has solo material that is definitely worth listening to. They are much more than just that Australian band with a novelty song. This is a good one. When somebody says men at work, I go to who can it be now. Overkill is a great one too. The Darkness. Hum. They had a strong hit with their song Stars, and that's not even in the top 10 of their best songs. The amount of alternative rock bands that cite hum as a major influence is staggering. Hell, the Deftones once admitted they were influenced by the tone of their album You'd Prefer an Astronaut when they were writing White Pony. Want an example of this? 
listen to the rave from the hum song, Little Dipper, and now the rave from the Deftones Knife Party. Their surprise new album this past year expanded their sound even more and was highly regarded. Definitely worth the time to put some headphones on and rift along. I'm going to go with the Fratellus and Maximo Park. This is an excellent question to ask. I'm currently looking up back catalogs of bands that seem to suddenly disappear after one or two songs and have found a few. Took some recommendations from this thread as well. Thanks very much. On a similar note, while certainly not a one-hit wonder, I had written R.E.M. off as being a really mopey, depressing band based on their two big songs, Losing My Religion and Everybody Hurts. After listening to their stunning 15 album discography, they are now my favorite band and am gutted to be so late to the party. The Fratellas have so much more than just Chelsea Dagger. It's always a nice surprise when they pop up on Pandora. I feel like the vast majority of people only know the Pogs for Fairytale of New York. I was surprised to find many people thought Scorpions were a one-hit wonder. Even more so as some thought their only hit was Winds of Change and others thought it was Rocky Like a Hurricane. The Cardigans was the first one that came to mind though so many good bands here. It's not just Love a Fool. Real Big Fish was really popular in the late 90s, mostly known for their song Sell Out. They even have a song about them being a one-hit wonder called One Hit Wonderful. But they are my favorite band and they still tour after all these years.